Welcome to Latin Nation, celebrating your generation from coast to coast. I'm your host, Humberto Guida, and I'm a fan of sassy, malassi Latinas with attitude who have an opinion on everything from the cultural impact of hipsters to the intricate flaws of our electoral college system. And so, of course, it goes without saying, although I'm gonna say it anyway, that I'm also a fan of the reigning Latina political pundit on TV and the web, Grace Parham. The former correspondent from the Comedy Central's The Nightly Show is conquering social media with her snarky take on the political process and what it means to be a loud, opinionated Latina in today's media climate. I'll tell you what it means. It means you get to kick off the show. Here is Grace Parra, only on Latin Nation. Hi, Grace Michelle Parra here, um, former Hillary Clinton, no, present Hillary Clinton supporter. I'm Grace Parra, and I'm a host and actress and writer. Would that politics were as easy to keep track of as coitus? Because if that were the case, we could have cleared things up for some confused conservatives this month, like Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal, who decided core curriculums are completely unnecessary. Well, I've uh, been acting since I was little. I always really liked comedy, too. So, I don't know, drama doesn't really do it for me. At some point, I realized that you could act and perform and not have to ever do drama. And I was like, oh, that's great. I don't, I'm just, I have no interest in that. I don't know, I always felt like I, I enjoyed expressing myself. And I felt like, uh, as much as I like playing characters and that and acting is still very much part of what I do, I do feel like the best character I play is me. I don't know, I just feel unabashed in, in ways maybe I should feel less bashed. Whatever, you understand what I'm saying. The NFL, as the most prominent of the pro sports industry in America can learn a lesson about transparency from the porn industry. I felt very influenced by Jon Stewart growing up and had made it my goal for a long time to do that. I wanted to be a contributor on a political comedy show and when Nightly Show came around it was amazing and a blessing and it felt very much like, okay, this is what I want to do. And it still is. And the exciting thing is that even though that show has since been canceled, RIP Nightly Show, we're all still alive, it's okay. Um, I do feel like my path is still very clear. I want to continue doing this. So I, I've always been, I've always wanted to do, you know, political commentary. Mexico has a border problem. And it's not the one you think, you filthy shit. It's the southern border, yeah! I majored in political science in college uh, at Columbia. And, but even before then, I was always interested in it. I think that I got into politics as somebody who was observing the 2000 election, Gore versus Bush, and was just, I couldn't believe how absurd it was. But there was something about the, both the drama and the stakes of it that made me feel really compelled. I am deeply proud of my Mexican heritage, and I'll be damned if I let Mexico become a country of zombies whose only goal is to get off the D-list. Mexico, you deserve better than this. What do I think went wrong with Clinton's campaign? I think there's a number of things that went wrong for her. Obviously the email scandal, obviously WikiLeaks, obviously the, uh, you know, the last minute FBI investigation or reopening, if you will. All these last minute October surprises that happened really worked against her. We just didn't think that much about it during the campaign was that it was more about her than it was about the message of the Democratic Party. And I think that was a problem because I think that with Trump, it was just as much about him as it was about the message, which was make America great again. And we have, uh, we want change and we are anti-establishment and we want to, I don't know, make white people feel okay in the country, whatever, whatever it may be. There was a message behind his campaign and with Hillary, it was, it was about her. I think those are missteps that happened to her. Now as for us and, and what happened to us as voters, I mean, you have to look at the numbers and it's very clear that we didn't turn out. And fortunately, 30% of Latinos voted for Trump, which is crazy. So what happened to us? I don't know, that I don't have an answer for. That is something I'm still trying to figure out and something that I, I now feel like it is my mission to get to the bottom of because we know that Hispanics are not a monolith. We know that. You cannot say that one Hispanic represents all Hispanic voices. But I so don't understand a Hispanic who would vote for Trump that I feel like it's contingent upon me to make it part of my job to understand what the perspective of a Latina for Trump is. Like 77% of Republicans who think that despite Jesus healing lepers, curing the crippled, and aiding the penniless, he would have been like, universal healthcare? Nah, son. 